The weather screamed with rain. The wind howled in the night. Twisted Robin, the acting sheriff of Sumder, could sense the fear in his steed. Ace was a horse with a youthful spirit. She was not used to the rain that hammered against her skin. The wet glossed her coat, a black shine flew in the midnight glare, which was illuminated by the full moon that started to rise over the horizon. Robin travelled deep into the rocky terrain that surrounded Sunder. His exhibition had now lasted over four days. He was on a hunt, a manhunt. The past two weeks were weeks that would never be forgotten. Not for Robin or any of the inhabitants of Sunder. A mass murder had tortured the spirit of the, of the town. The soul of the region had taken a dark turn. Death had suffocated production. Eight bodies lay in an inn, now buried beneath the ground. Robin reimagined the stench he encountered upon discovery of the mass murder. The picture was so clear in his mind. It was the subject of nightmares. He couldn't shake the vision from his head. He stared into the distance as though he had seen death. He had. He couldn't let the others see his fear. Robin was so focused. He must catch the person responsible for the killing. He must bring the killer to justice. Everyone relied on him. Everyone expected the mystery to be solved. The evidence frazzled his mind. He knew he was up against a monster. This person is more animal than man. He reimagined the shotgun jammed down Gibson's gullet. Gibson was the owner of the inn, subjected to the kitten. He had a family that he left behind, a wife and two children. One being two months old. He received no mercy, no warning. There can be no mercy in our vengeance. There were five men and a woman in the posse. Three, including Robin, were men of the law. The others were volunteers, family members of those who were slain. It was a worthy group for the hunt. Robin raised his left hand to signify the group to stop, whilst using his right to pull the reins around his horse's neck. Ace followed his command and swiftly slowed to a stop. The group followed Robin's lead. What's wrong, Sheriff? Why have we stopped? asked Carrot Calvin. His four golden teeth on full display. The busted face and replaced teeth the reason for his nickname. Robin did not answer. He looked around the area. The posse had galloped into a dried up river. The river dried up before the time of Robin. Not even his distant ancestors would have seen water running in this region. The ground was no longer flat, rather it was full of eroded rocks. The horses won't be able to get through here swiftly. One wrong step and our horses will break a leg, twisted Robert and replied to Carrot Calvin in a commanding tone. Perhaps we should rest here tonight then. The guards are hammering us tonight, the boys are starting to struggle against the wind, Carrot suggested. Robin had felt the twinging annoyance of his leadership being questioned many times during the hunt. He couldn't have the others second guessing his leadership or his choices. Not this early in the trip. Yet Carrot had raised a good point. The group were fatigued from the constant travel. You're right, Calvin. Get the others to set up camp. We'll rest here tonight. Tomorrow is a big day. Tomorrow, we will catch whoever has hunted our, haunted our town. Aren't it, Sheriff? Calvin responded. He held a shine in his eyes that indicated his power hunger had been fed. It would be good to keep his question in mind on a leash, Robin thought. He stood strong after dismounting Ace. Once again, he stared around his surroundings, scouting the area with his eyes. He started to wander in his ponder. The ground was uneven in places. Tomorrow will be a hard walk as the horses will have to remain behind due to the dodgy terrain. Hills surrounded the dried up lake, compressing the roots in a narrow, hilly trail. The trail led to the snowtops. Twisted Robin had journeyed to the snowtops only once before. They were a series of mountains ranging from Sundale to the closest city. That would be Canton. Canton was many miles away. Not many people survived the journey through the snowtops to Canton. 
It was a deadly route due to the unpredictable terrain. Black bears and white cougars stalked the region, preying on each other and the wildlife that had adapted away from human interference. But that was not the animal Robin feared to encounter. Robin feared this animal he was hunting. He reached inside his inner pocket of his winter jacket. The jacket was brown and matched the hat over his head. He took out the note, left at the scene, and slowly read the maniac's words. To the new sheriff, I have slain the last. Sundale is a wretched place. It was time for Sundale to see judgment. On this day, you hold this note. You shall know that the reaper has visited your sick town. I am the cure to disposition. I balance what is unbalanced. Sundale is now balanced. I journey away from this town, towards my next destination. I travel towards Canton, through the mountainary terrain. I will balance their city, just like your pathetic town. I challenge you, follow me, hunt me, try and bring down my brain. You will fail if you try, because I have been doing this for years, before you were born. Come. Come and catch me. I will only increase my body count. All I need is my whiskey. I dare you. Come meet me. Regards, Osin the Bloody Lawless. P.S. I didn't have a pen, so I used that crazy bitch's blood. You don't think she would mind, what do you? Rereading the note made Robin feel sick with anger. This man is more twisted than me. The sheriff clutched the now wet nose in pure anger. I must catch him. I can't let him walk free around freely. He tucked the note back into his jacket pocket, wiped away his stern expression. It was time to put a brave face on. The others cannot see a weakness. A fire already started to crackle when he rejoined the others. The group gathered around the heat source, warming their hands up. The ferocious heat from the fire was in a losing battle against the sting of the evening chill. Fortunately, the group had a bit of natural shelter. Few trees surrounded the area, but the group were grateful. Anything to stop the rain hammering on top of them. There was no laughter or chats, only silence and seriousness. The feeling around camp was dark and still. Everyone stood around the fire, staring as the flames fought against the wet. The horses shrieked in the darkness. Only the shelter from the trees they were tied to could protect them from the shower that drenched them. How will we sleep tonight? It was no longer a worry. The group were already working on top of sleepless nights. Robin had the greatest worry for Clayton. Clayton was the least experienced of all the men. This was his first time on the hunt. He was only brought along due to his insistence that he must join. He probably regrets it now. Robin stared deep at the young boy's face. He showed no mental cracks in his stern expression. He couldn't help in holding back a wry smile on his persistence for adventure. It might not go the way you expect. He remembered the words he told the kid when Clayton put his hand up a fifth time to volunteer. Bloody kids. I should have shut him down then. He grinned at the memory. Big boy Bill interrupted the silence with a playful punch in the arm of Clayton. Boy! Fetch me my canteen on my horse over there! The punch wasn't meant to be hard, but Bill was one to forget his size and strength. Clayton was knocked to the ground, his blonde hair almost sizzling in the fire. Anger boiled in the young man's eyes to the realisation of the close escape. Don't push me like that, Bill. I'm not a slave on this trip. You keep telling me to do things for you, and I'm telling you now to your face. Don't do that, Bill. It was a brave shout by the kid. Bill did not like it. He did not like it one bit. All eyes were upon the confrontation. Bill clenched his fist in anger, unable to speak from the public humiliation that was given to him from someone half his age. Then he relaxed and his smile came back to his face. I didn't know you had a voice, son. How about you use your pecker more often? 
rather than boiling over like that. That's a good boy. Now go and grab my canteen before I grab your balls and stuff them down that big gob of yours. The following moment was a tense one. Clayton was sizing Bill up and was being very obvious about it. His yellow teeth almost bit through his lips as he angrily clenched them together. It was a very naive move. He wouldn't last long against being Big Boy Bill in the scru scuffle. Bill isn't one to forget something like this. It was Jazz Bill who broke the tension. A killer lurks in the shadows and we draw unnecessary eyes over a canteen, he interjected. Jasper was the only one who refused to shelter. He sat against a rock that rested his back. His dark clothing blended him into his, sur his dark surroundings. His black hat was tilted in such a way that darkened his eyes. He wore a black coat that dangled to his feet. His black fur chaps covered the majority of his brown boots. In his hands, he was sharpening his hunting knife preparing himself for the days ahead. Only fools argue with allies, he finished. Jasper held a calm presence, indicating experience. It was backed up by his record as a lawman. It was said that Jasper had filled up over half of Sundale's jail population. A rumour Robin heard, but believed to be exaggerated. He had he had always had a silent held he had always held a silent rivalry with Jasper as the two of them did things differently, but that didn't mean he didn't respect the man that was just as suspected as him. Jasper was the first to join Robin's cause, followed by Greta. Jasper's frights, arguing brings nothing to our purpose. No one here joined up so we could just argue amongst ourselves, so why do it? Greta added. For a lady, Greta had masculine features. She stood stern and fair. Her natural body language echoed power. She was someone who wasn't afraid to challenge others, and it would be a big mistake for a man to believe he was born better. Greta was only spurred on by the, des by the desire and satisfaction to prove someone else's judgement wrong. Yet the judgement would always follow her wherever she went. Today was no exception. The organisation of camp is man's business, woman, so keep your ugly trap shut. Billy shouted at Greta. His temper rising due to the interference of others. It is certainly not dog's business, Bill. So stop barking orders around, Greta responded, rivaling in Bill's tone. A smug smile drew in the man's face to the woman's response. He knew he had been outwitted, and couldn't think of a reply. He felt the red twinges of hum humiliation ri rose up his cheeks. A rage boiled inside of the man, rising through his gut, but he managed to keep it contained with a clenched fist. Enough! shouted Robin, trying to take control of the situation before something regrettable was to happen. Can't you see what is happening here? <laughs> yeah, Big Boy Bill was having his name tested, joked Joe Brax. He sniggered into his hands, uncontrollably laughing at the situation he was watching through the flames of the fire. Joe was a weasel of a man. He was skinny, untidy, and usually dirty. Yes, he was normally a joy to be around, took things lightly, and was generally a motivating character for his ability to make light of serious moments. Robin thought it was good for the group to have him at us at the party, to try and keep morale as high as possible. He was the sort of person that loved gossip, confrontations and drama, and was usually the pinnacle of all the drama that developed in social situations. From what I see... I'm starting to think the big boy isn't so big in bulk or balls, laughed Joe. Bill, who had come accustomed to Joe's humour and personality during the trip, knew that the man was just kidding. He stared at the man for a few seconds before belting out a laugh. He laughed for a good minute as tears started to pour down his eyes. During his outburst of cry laughter, he stood up, walked over to his horse and grabbed his canteen. He took an almighty gulp. Joe had successfully defused the confrontation. Everyone went back to their silence. Now, only the flames flickered angry sparks. Eventually, the group slept as the evening dwindled to a close. The rain stopped showering and started to spit. One by one, they went to the sleep in their comfortable positions they found around camp. Soon, 
It was just Robin who remained awake. He had decided that he was the first to take watch, followed by Clayton. He needed time to think, to clear his mind. The last few days were ones that Robin wished to forget. Mental scars had scratched the surface of his mind. The pressure was on him to bring down this killer. It was all he was focused on. From a very young age, he, was, he had trained himself in the methods of stealth. He tiptoed around camp, careful not to disturb anyone sleeping. He remembered those times he spent at Bristow Woods, on the outskirts of Sunday, where he would stalk squirrels, trying to get as close to the animals as possible before they sprinted up towards their trees. As he silently walked around camp, he felt something was on his mind that was alarming him, but he didn't know what. He desperately tried to remember when this worry first appeared, reminiscing, remembering back through the day's events, searching for the moment that first indicated this feeling of concern. Maybe it was something further back than today's events, Robin mused. He thought back to the day he assigned the group, to the day he walked into the inn and discovered the dead bodies, to the day of his mother's passing. He remembered why people called him Twisted before his name Robin. Sometimes he forgot why the name was given to him. People had called him it since the day his mother died eight years ago. It was a part of his identity now. Robin was desensitized to death. Those corpses in the inn weren't the first encounter he had with finding death. His mother was his first meeting with the Reaper. Oswald Beckett led the gang that had kidnapped his mother and they were demanding ransom. At the time, the community of Sunday were not willing to collate the funds. It wasn't a closely knit community like it is today. Everyone looked out for themselves. It was meant to be a warning to Robin, and all the sheriffs of Sunday. They warned that this was the first citizen of Sunday to be kidnapped, and more kidnappings would follow if the money wasn't paid. Why did they pick her? It was a question Robin had always agonised over. At the time, he showed a brave face. It was him that pushed forward the idea to invade the gang's camp, bringing the fight to Oswald to retrieve his mother. It went wrong. Members of the gang saw the group coming. Robin blames himself for his mother's death. They burnt her alive as the group approached the outlaws' camp. After that, Robin made sure there were no negotiations, only death. Robin watched the light of day escape each of the gang members. He watched his eyes close, pleading for air, legs withering, scratching at their throats, trying to loosen the rope tied around their necks. Robin made sure the bodies floated from the ground for an entire month, a warning to all. After a week of rotted bodies, he was forced to take them down from the hangman's rope. Vengeance is a satisfying feeling. His vengeance on Oswald was the most satisfying. He crucified the man. He hung him up in front of his hanging gang. He had to watch his gang's fall as his strength slowly dwindled away. The public started calling Robin Twisted. Clearly, they saw the funny side as the lifeless corpses twisted round on the rope they were hung to. Robin chuckled to the force. He knew his nickname was for another reason. The fact the punishment was so messed up. But he liked the fear others felt towards him. He couldn't wait to get his hands on Osen. Osen had provided Sundale the biggest crime in the town's history. Robin would make sure the biggest punishment would follow. His name would be confirmed in the town's history, his legacy forever etched in the blood of the town, in the blood of Osen. He needed Osen for his hidden ambitions. Robin stood stroking one of, his, of, one of the horses. He hadn't noticed how far he had disappeared into the memory of his own mind. His hand fell to a canteen t attached to the saddle of the horse he had been patting. He smiled at the argument that had occurred between Bill and Clayton just hours earlier. The argument was a silly one. Again, he felt that alarming sensation he had felt before as his hand held onto the canteen. What was so alarming? Confusion mystified the sheriff. It made his throat go dry with thoughts. He unscrewed the canteen, thinking back to Bill's strange manner as he exploded into a bundle of cry laughter. At the time, it was funny, but looking back, something seemed odd about the laugh. It was as though Bill had laughed at everyone 
rather than that Joe Bags' joke. Robin brought the canteen to his lips. He remembered Jasper's words. Only fools argue with allies. The sentence had echoed in his head. He swigged the drink down. The taste was an instant shock as his taste buds. The taste was an instant shock to his taste buds. He expected water, not alcohol. He spat the drink out as the knife entered him. A sharp, silent, deadly, cold pain had speared his neck. He couldn't scream out. He could only feel the knife as it twisted in his neck. He slumped to his knees, feeling the chill of the rocks match the chill of the blade inside of him. His killer kept twisting the blade as though it was a sick joke. He's mocking me. His final thoughts were Osin's words as he realised he had, he had been beaten. All I need is my whiskey. I dare you. Come meet the Reaper. He wanted to scream, to cry, but he couldn't do it. He couldn't do anything. Robin thumped to the ground as his life ended. Um, I hope you enjoyed this audio story. The next part will be linked in the description below or will be coming out very shortly. Remember, please show your support to Huey Bear Stories by liking this video and subscribing. Uh, I would love to write more of these stories um, and I really want to make them stories that you will love. If you enjoyed this, please share it, spread the word, post it online on your social media, spread it everywhere. I'd be so grateful. Not just that, comments. Comments on what you think about the story, comments on how it can improve, what story you want to hear next, what you think will happen, what do you think will happen, who will live, who will survive, but please, no spoilers. Thank you for listening, I appreciate it so much, and can't wait to continue with this story, with this journey. All the best, Huey Bear. Over and out.